My name is Corey Brady and this is my uh, recorded uh, evaluation of Unit 13 and to start off I'll be responding to, or I'll be talking about the context and responding to the project proposal and the first thing here is what did you set out to achieve? Well, I set out to achieve to make overall improvements on my last FMP and my uh, a few other things and other units in terms of timing and so on and so forth like that and how did I evidence it in my project proposal? Well, I talked about how there was delays and more so planning and future planning didn't go so well because it, I didn't plan at all and I ended up having to use people at the last minute that didn't turn out very good or very useful, etc, etc. So that's why uh, I did also evidence previous units as well where just timing has gone wrong due to uh, issues with equipment or just all around general not planning beforehand so that's what i was trying to talk about in my project uh, project proposal foremost was just to make an improvement overall from my last year's fmp uh, but i also did uh, talk about other units uh how did i decide on my final idea well i decided to work with a short uh, a small production group that were working on a book a vampire book adaptation to a short film and I knew the director and I knew he was competent with his work and I felt confident in working in that group. Um, but for what my roles were, I just was um, set design, props design and lighting. And what inspired me initially is like Alfred Hitchcock inspired me with the light, his use of lighting in films and how he can convey certain things or make scenarios tenser. Uh, through the use of cookies or flags uh, but other than that props and set design the thing that inspired me from there was my previous unit after doing a small uh, sm uh, significantly smaller essay than what you would do at university but still it, it, from doing that I just fell in love with the whole idea of like prop, uh, small prop ma making small props and uh, also set design because they kind of contribute each other and they work off of each other and they were small the idea the like the, even though the things i did were small they still in a in the grand scheme of things like without them it wouldn't be as good essentially um okay other than that how did i say how oh does your final product reflect the context outlined in your project proposal okay the this is a yes and a no um yes in that Things were done to a semi-professional manner, even though through the setbacks and no, because there were setbacks and I could have done things to counter them. I like certain things regarding editing, timing and all those sort of things. And based on uh, uh, like things slowed me down in terms of research, especially when it come to, came to editing, because I had to... Uh, talk uh, well I there was a few techniques I wanted to implement into my edits but after researching after a while it just didn't what like I wasn't coming up with anything so overall it's a yes in that I have made an improvement and I have worked I have found uh, I've been able to work with setbacks and still come up with a, a semi-professional outcome but it could be improved upon great. Uh, it could be improved upon a lot more if there was less uh, setbacks. Um, why did I select the context? It was just generally to improve upon my fi uh, my my uh, or improve upon and show my worth in that I instead of like my final major project last year, which didn't go very well, I wanted to prove myself for this year in my final major project this year, and I feel I have slash have not as again like I reflect on like there were things that I would have done uh, or that I did now that I would have, that I would have struggled to do in my FMP last year um okay to move on from there research process and outcomes what research did you conduct to inform your planning a lot of the research that I, that I went into to inform my planning was generally around vampire tv shows and vampire films and I was looking at the lighting in those films uh, just to get an idea of how they're lit and like any special type of things they do specific for that genre. For instance, gloss on the side of the face of vampires when they're in sunlight to resemble like as if they're 
uh, the sun is like melting them or something like that. Also, uh, low mood lighting uh, as well was pretty evident. Uh, cold as lighting as well. Uh, that was one thing I found out pretty uh, uh, found out pretty quickly as well. Um, I also looked into things when it came to uh, prop design. When it came to those, it was just looking into how to assemble such things like that. It was pretty kind of simple stuff. There wasn't really much I could talk about other, uh, or talk about other than that. It was just like, okay, I know what I need to make. Here's what I need to do. I want to find out how to make it. Oh, there's a video here. I can make it this way, but also I documented it my way, own way. And I also showed like the struggles and things I went through whilst making it. Um, what other research did you conduct and why? Uh, there was other research in terms of looking at books and YouTube tutorials on term, in terms of editing. But those things I can say weren't used mainly because they weren't substantial enough or I didn't find anything from them at all. Uh, and that brings me on to like, what was my most significant research findings and what research method was least effective or most effective type thing. Uh, most effective method well, most effective method was researching into the genres, uh, also uh, researching into the audience as well, because from looking into the audience, I found a gap in the market, uh, which basically, I found a gap in the market from looking into the audience on YouGov profiles, where as the female audience who, or let's say middle-aged to younger, young adults, they had vampire films targeted at all of them. But for the male audience, it was generally the older, older generation that had vampire films kind of targeted towards them, or they enjoyed older vampire films, um, and they would be like middle aged. So there wasn't anything in terms of a young target audience for vamp or young male target audience for male vampire films. So that's one thing that was most that was my most effective research or findings that I had. Um, and which method was least effective. It was definitely the books on Alfred Hitchcock because when I went to go get them from the library, I looked into the glossary and uh, it said stuff about lighting. I was like, oh, this is brilliant. Let's go through. Got home, started reading through and couldn't find anything or I found some references, but it was only just talking about the lights they used then and now. And I knew it wasn't something to mention because of the fact that what I was using won't be what Alfred Hitch what was uh, written what what Alfred Hitchcock used so and then over the holiday when I continued reading both books I just couldn't glean a single thing from it I was mostly talking about pre-production pre um and production and things to do with storyboards there was a few floor plans but that's about it and the very few references to actual lighting themselves I wanted to go into it to find something relating to the cookies and the shadows that he has been known to use um Oh, sorry, I skipped one. Um, oh, what was... Oh, yes. Uh, now to move on to how could your research portfolio be improved? Could be improved by using more professionals. I did try to do that, but due to time constraints and issues with timing overall and arranging it with him or the, the professional, I couldn't... I couldn't essentially get it. So if I feel like, and this was to do with set design, if I feel I got that interview and actually went down to the actual workshop and everything like that, I would have had a greater wealth of knowledge in terms of set design. It would have helped me understand what I needed to do more for set design in general. So that was that was uh, one thing that could have been improved. Also, if I didn't in my re uh, in my questionnaire, if initially I had checked it before sending it out, because the first initial time I sent it out, there was an issue in that some of the questions repeated themselves or didn't make all that sense or people just didn't understand the questions in general because they've never heard of some of the things I was referencing. After I saw that, though, I did, up, uh, I did update it and then repost it, but I feel I would have got better results overall if I didn't do that if that didn't occur in the first place um okay now move on to 
completion of this project, can you identify areas of research that would have improved that would have improved your final product? Areas of research, um, lighting scenes, like in general, I did a lot of scenes for lighting in terms of like room light, uh, room lighting, but not so much external. The only things I really looked at for external lighting were to do with um, how to uh, how to color correct. That was it. That was for for out, outdoor shots. And to be honest, I couldn't really feel, I didn't feel or think that there was much more to really do because essentially I was just going to be going outside and broad daylight and just standing around with a bounce board. Um, but yes, uh, how did I perform as a research? I, I feel I performed mediocre and not professional, more, more so because... Again, there were things I know I could have researched into and just due to issues with getting things, finding and sourcing things myself, which I, which initially I do struggle with. Um, I feel if I was able to like do that, I would have been, uh, would have been better um, at researching. So again, I rate myself as mediocre in terms of a researcher. And yes, uh, for what's seemingly here is how have your research skills developed from unit one to 13? Um, I use more credible resources, um, uh, get in contact with professionals. Uh, what else is there? The amount of research has practically doubled uh, or even quadrupled, but I do not like, uh, essentially I do know from when I began to where I am now, my research at the beginning was very lacklustre, and to where I am now, it is significantly better. In terms that there is more of it, more of it that kind of supports what I was doing. Okay, moving on to problem solving, challenges. All right, challenges facing the come. How did you use feedback from your pitch to inform and make changes to your final proposal slash idea? Well, in the pitch, I didn't really get any comments on my lighting or props or set design or anything like that. And I didn't have any questions directed towards me about it. So I feel like as for my roles, my roles were okay. It was just like I did have to explain in terms of what I was doing with working on uh, or what I was doing uh, with the prop knife and how I was sourcing it and things like that. Uh, yeah, again, there was no, nothing really I could say would have changed my, the aspect of my job roles, because again, there were, I didn't feel there was any criticisms or questions about it. Uh, how do you use the progress review feedback to improve? Uh, progress review feedback, it helped me understand, like, instead of just trolling through and just like becoming and hit a uh, plateauing and hitting a bra uh, black uh, brick wall. When I started to plateau, the reviews would then like I, I, I could ask questions and see if like if this is a good idea to go down. Because again, like with me, it's more so if I am doing something, I kind of get worried about it and I get panicky and it ends up to me plateauing essentially with the whole uh, progress and I don't make any ground or I, and well, I don't really do anything significant. So with um, progress reviews, it kind of gave me the opportunity to ask questions and also receive feedback on my work. And initially, like some of the things I did, like I was skeptical of, but after peer feedback, or peer, not peer feedback, sorry, progress reviews, it was like, oh, okay, so I actually, this is good. It, w it would give me a confidence boost in my work, essentially. Um, what programs or what problems did I uh, did I encounter and how do I rectify these? All right. Initially, we had a problem with our actor turning up late. Uh, this was rectified very. Yeah, well, this was rectified. It was kind of a mess at the time, but it did manage to get rectified. Like at the time, we called up our tutors to let them know that our direct, uh, that our actor hasn't showed up on time, and that we were thinking of using David as 
one of our actors and we were getting through makeup and everything and so on and so forth like that. But we were called back in and they wanted us to explain it in person because initially over the phone I didn't do it too well and I think they got a bit confused. So, But after a face-to-face -face discussion, they were okay. They said, you can do what you want. Uh, just like if you are doing it this way, you need to do this and that, etc. So we initially from there, it was just like, we'll go out and film. This issue though with our actor... He he did he show up, he showed up late consistently. There was only a few a couple of times where he wasn't late, and that was just because we picked him up to head to a location, and he had to be ready for a specific time. Um, but the the only way we can counter or rectify those issues is just film film until we're told to stop or told or someone tells us to stop because they're getting annoyed or the owner of the house or in general area just being too dark to film in really that's when we were like so we will just film as much as we could in the time we had due to our actor being late um other problems that i did encounter other problems were when editing i ran into an issue with going home to edit and then coming back and then the files being glitchy and having to restart and restart and restart and then getting to the point where after a week I had a rough edit I'd one scene to do went home to go and edit it after a problem on the Mac uh, uh, after a problem on uh, the Mac at college where it just basically ruined my render for or, or all the scenes because I managed to get the final scene done uh, into a rough edit stage but a render issue occurred and it saved and uh or tried to save, couldn't save, and then just, just like, uh, error messages just filled the screen, and I couldn't do anything, and the technician came in, and factory reset it, and then after that time, I went home, and when I went to, then, like, I, I, in my head, I was like, okay, I've got these scenes done, I just need to do one more scene, and that's my rough edit, and I can get it out and reviewed, but when I went to upload it or put my, uh, well, when I went to go and work on it at home, the save file had to be corrupted and I had to sit and work around it. And generally, most of the time during the days, I was spending hours and hours just trying to get uh, get the all the scenes together quickly, as quickly as possible into a rough edit so I can then, um, so I can then, um, so I can then do uh, rough edit feedback. There we go. Um, which problem solving have you showcased? Determination, stubbornness, and uh, um, even uh, in the face of advertisy, I kind of like just carried on and put on a brave face and stuck my head down and did my work. So it's mainly just persistence and not uh, lying or doing lying around doing nothing and feeling sorry for myself and feeling disheartened. So, like in the face of like just complete and utter um, disappointment, I still powered through and worked through. So there's like determination that I feel that I was showcased a lot as well, and especially during filming as well because of like. Uh, being determined and also being able to keep a cool and calm head whilst filming because at the end of the day when we were filming for extended periods of time um, it did things got a bit heated or people weren't too happy with each other but uh, during filming it was just in my mind it was just get through this don't cause any trouble or uh, don't cause any trouble don't annoy anyone be as polite as possible keeping communication with my director and cinematographer and things like that um which problem solving skills require improvement and how um standing my ground or standing up and like making a point of a certain thing because there were periods in time where we were filming but we didn't need to film for that long it was just a bunch of people not doing what they were supposed to do and for me i didn't really feel confident kind of felt a bit more like i should stay back instead of cause problems because that's what i felt if i tried to pipe up and say something like guys come on let's get on with this it would cause 
people to get annoyed because they would think like, oh, we're doing okay. But so self-belief um, and confidence, that's one thing I could say should be improved in terms of problem solving skills. Um, the problems that I faced, they, uh, the project proposal, it affected the schedule more so. And it did also affect what my final edit was going to be like as well, because I knew it wasn't going to be a good to a good standard due to the amount of time I had to spend on it and the amount of time I had to also spend on revision as well. Um, so uh, having to perform a balancing act like that and then also having to produce like a rough edit and final edit within a week, it wasn't the best in terms of like, I don't feel confident about my, my capability, but in my feedback that I've got from my reviews, I have heard good things. Uh, people do say it is good, but it just needs a, fly, uh, a few minor improvements. Um, um, but yes, that's how it affected my proposal. It affected schedule and what I wanted to achieve that was affected. Um, planning and production, what skills and qualities have you demonstrated and learned in this stage of production? Uh, more so the skills and qualities that were, uh, that came about through the planet or pre-production phase was just collectively talking to like uh, uh my initiative went up like i i was very initiative with uh doing things for myself in terms of my specific job role i managed to get test shots done i managed to or not test shots my te tests i wanted to do to test out cookies or anything like that and also the ability to uh, consistently try, even though in the face of just like getting nose and nose and nose and nose and nose, um, through like, uh, no nose and nose regarding locations. So I would say, yes, that, and again, stubbornness, uh, persistence and professionalism, politeness as well. Uh, also communication. Uh, I was communicating a lot of back and forth between the director and the cinematographer. Uh, more so it was verbal communication, but I was just putting forward ideas and seeing if they were okay with them, if they were happy, and if I got the green light, then it was like, yes, go ahead and do it. Uh, those type of things, really. Um, other than that, oh yeah, so moving on to what did you find most challenging slash enjoyable and why? Oh, okay, this is um, a difficult one because I didn't really find this so much as enjoyable as I did my previous project, mainly just as uh, all the things that went kind of wrong. It put a lot of stress on my mind and I just wanted to get the work done to a specific standard, get it out of the way and make sure everything was okay. So it was less like I was enjoying this. It was more so just like, do it essentially like I, I couldn't take any fun from it. it was what i saw it as was work and that was work alone it wasn't something i took enjoyment from um but in issues with like finding most challenging uh, in terms of pre-production nothing too challenging popped up other than just like finding a location uh oh, also the knife prop making that was a that was an issue as well. Um, so yes, in terms of things I face or troubles I faced, it was finding a location because it was just constantly we were getting no's or things were just extremely out of our budget or just too far away to even attempt anything. It would just be too expensive. Um, what else was there? Yes, the prop knife. My initial plan and everything can uh, my estimated time on how long it would take. That, like, the one thing that just sent me back completely from that was just the amount of work that had to be put into it and the amount of times it had to be reworked because the, it didn't 
go together as well as I had hoped. And most of the time, I want what I wanted to do or what I was doing was counter, it was kind of counterproductive in a way. Because the way I planned out was to get some plywood, cut it down in small chunks, make it a handle, fit a spring mechanism in, and then sand down a uh, uh, some plywood to make it into or to form the shape of a blade. And then when stabbed, the blade would retract and everything like that. But due to the amount of materials used, it just made the whole process a lot longer. And if I was to carry on with it, we wouldn't have had very good props for filming um, and what was my time management like how did you ensure you worked to your project proposal schedule time management was okay up until the point and when there was an issue because um, when those issues arised it derailed what I had planned and because what I had or it derailed what I had planned. So I can say I didn't do very well in that because it was just, again, it derailed my plan and having to reorganize everything, re uh, rethink into the future of what I'm going to be doing that day. Like, to me, that would have been too difficult. I do struggle to kind of like make a decision like, okay, by then let's do this. Because initially, like, I'm not entirely sure how long things take and like, for instance, finding a location that was supposed to be done by a specific time, but it wasn't because it was just constantly no's and no's and no's and no's. And because I was still trying to find a location, it just ate into other things I wanted to do. Uh, for instance, my interview uh, at with the uh, set designer in London, I wanted to do that, but due to scheduling issues, it was I was not able to do it because I was out filming and yeah essentially that's that and how important was the contingency plan the contingency plan was very important like there were a few things where it was I knew what to do because it was written down in contingency plan I did think far ahead in terms of contingency plan and some things I even didn't that I didn't even put down that I did, well, well, let me reword that, things that I did in face in the face of setbacks or anything like that, I knew what to do based on what I had said in my contingency plan. So it wasn't essentially fully worded in my contingency plan, but based off the things that I had put in there, I had an idea almost instantly on what to do. Uh, moving on to... Practical skills, pro production and post-production in this section, you should use audience feedback in support of you. Does your product meet your initial intentions and why? Yes, I feel it does meet, uh, does meet the initial intentions. And why is because all the people I generally interviewed or showed the film to enjoyed it, even though I, did, I wasn't that confident in it. I did receive like feedback and that like people did understand it or they did like the setting the mood and things like that so understandably like for instance uh my friend who was there for a rough edit review and a final edit review he even said that there was a significant improvement in terms of like the sound was well placed um it kind of added atmosphere to the uh to the film and you could understand things in the film a bit more uh, also some of the transitions were sorted he did note upon that and that it was a greater a greater improvement overall than what the uh, rough edit was um what did you find most challenging slash enjoyable and why uh, again i reiterate that there wasn't much stuff enjoyable about it and the most challenging thing was was working through the day on one day is when everyone was not too happy with each other or everyone was tired slash moody and then having to re the realization that we've got to come back here tomorrow to film for a long period of time it kind of made put me in a mood but one of those moods where it was just like i can't if i i, I wasn't going to sit there and do nothing i was going to still do it and still do it do it the best way i could possibly um 
How is your time management like? How do you ensure you work to your project proposal schedule? Well, so again, I say, oh no, I'm reading off. Oh, I'm reading off. Of, I've reiterated uh, some uh, the wrong, wrong title heading. Sorry about that. Mm, have um, there we go. Have the needs of your target audience been met, and how? The needs generally, I do feel that uh, met because all the people I interviewed, excluding one, or not interviewed, or showed the test screening to, were male, excluding one who was female, and that was to kind of reference the secondary audience, and all did say they had enjoyed it. And that's why I feel I kind of met the needs of them because they were like, yes, this is something I liked. I like the whole premise of it. I like the lighting. I like the sound. I like the music. I like it. It's so even to the point where like things, for instance, such as props and even the set design wasn't even noticed, which is a keen, which is a brilliant thing in my mind because I do know like the whole point of set design nowadays is just to make it look seamless, like it actually exists and is actually a thing. So, yes, I do feel the needs of my target audience have been met. What are your strengths of your product and why? Strengths more so are lighting and the making of, and also the set design of a fridge in the, uh, in the film. Not so much the prop making because of the issues I had with that. Oh, not so much with the knife prop making because of the issues I had with that. But yes, um, yeah, my strengths in lighting were brilliant because I, I feel were, were very, very good because it kind of, instead of it just being plain bland and everything, the lighting and the way I set it up added color to the film. It was like made people think and it was like, it's, to, uh, made, when I say made people think, people liked it because it, gave them a sense of what they should feel in the scene it kind of it kind of made the it gave emotion and to, not, not emotion sorry it gave an atmosphere to the scene like the music gives an atmosphere it kind of like and the dark light with the blue pale lights on the background where the scene had been lit that way it kind of gives you an idea of like evil or cold place that isn't the it's like a cold harsh place that not many people are welcome to so that's what i feel my strengths were in what are the products areas for improvement edit definitely definitely the edit uh also prop making of the knife um the reason uh yeah that's simply it that's all i can suggest for the product overall in terms but it's going more depth in terms for the edit uh, transitions all the transition like I was only able to implement few transitions because of the time I had I was only able to I wasn't able to implement all the sound recordings mainly because we didn't get any of the sound recordings we didn't get any of, well we got the sound recordings but they were all unorganized uh, and some were missing from scenes and also we didn't get any foley sound in fact i didn't get all the music until practically the final edit where i had to go and actually find it myself um so th so those are the areas for improvement it's just in terms of edit but that's that what skills and knowledge have you gained I gained a few editing technique, uh, knowledge in a few editing techniques. I also gained knowledge in terms of prop making um, because of like the whole issue with the prop knife. I was able to like, after speaking to my tutor, Tracy, she just suggested if the materials cost to make the prop cost more than the actual uh, or cost more than props you can source from online, then it's better to source it from online. But me being very kind of like narrow minded and boxed in my own head in terms of thinking, I didn't, I didn't notice that. I, d I didn't care. Money wasn't an issue for me when it came to props. But yes, um, 
those are the skills and knowledge I gained and does your project reflect industry standards um, no does not reflect industry standards in terms of my product my edit no but lighting and I feel some of the set design and lighting yeah as lighting I already mentioned I do feel reflect industry standards because of the way it was used and implemented in the film um, other things to consider overall I did feel I challenged myself I did feel I challenged myself and I set. I kind of like I challenged myself not to the point where I did on my last edit uh, on my last FMP where I kind of challenged myself too much I still challenged myself and gave myself a bit of a situation where or a kind of grey area where it was like did I bite off too much too much to chew and then realizing like oh I don't know maybe maybe and still getting the work done or done to somewhat of a standard um so yeah I feel there's a kind of a gray area in terms of that I did challenge myself but I don't know if I did if I challenged myself too hard essentially thinking back from it or thinking back on the entirety of it yeah it, all I can get is just that kind of gray area where it just transitions between I set the bar too high or I set the bar too low I don't really know um do you find it difficult controlling your own schedule and setting your own brief I do find it difficult controlling my own schedule yes I do find that difficult especially when working along other people's schedules because if something goes wrong with them, for instance, an actor not showing up or we're not getting sound or we're not doing this because of this reason, that kind of upsets me in terms of, it upsets my scheduling because I wanted to get something done by this day, but I can't because of this or because someone hasn't done this. Um, what have I, um Moving on to what have I learned about myself? Have you identified any gaps in knowledge? Uh, yes, I haven't. I haven't. Um, I didn't think I, I, I thought I was better at prop making than I actually am. And going in with that kind of ego kind of knocked me down a few belts. But knowing that like that I've been knocked down a few belts, I can like still knowing where I sit has given me a greater idea of like what to set out to do next time uh and like set out in terms of like not overthink things actually like be more like think things through think things outside of the box think things inside of the box and be money smart as well um so yes uh mm, what do you hope to achieve next year for my oh next year next year while well, i am going to university and what the things i would like to achieve would be to generally stick around more prop uh prop work but also stop motion work and also i would like to get into kind of like writing comedic things or writing comedic uh, comedic shorts or things like that because generally like i i beforehand with other products uh, especially four of a kind i've been like i liked writing that script and it, it, it was a well received script uh because of just the way it was written and yeah so it's generally i'm going to be focusing around more prop making stop motion animation comedic and also set design that is one thing i want to do because initially before picking my previous unit I did was in two minds of making a set for a fight scene to choreograph a fight scene, for example. Regrets this year, putting trust in, or what it, putting blind trust in people, that's one of my regrets. And the reason why I say that is because There was an there was a big issue with in terms of sound and getting sound and the person that we were supposed to get it sound from was unreliable, um, and in fact is unreliable. And I kind of feel like I I regret kind of putting blind trust in him because it has it has significantly changed 
the way or the outcome of my overall edit. And the reason why I say this is, for instance, we were supposed to go over to the sound guy's house to record sound. But I know he asked me if like I was able to come and I notified him like I'm saying I can't come because of I've had to restart working on my edit and I've and yeah and he didn't respond to that so it was just like what's going on and then there was an issue with like pretend I couldn't make it there because of um, uh, because he didn't have the money but then it wasn't rectified until like 10 p.m. that night and Joe offered to pay for the travel there but not back and then I feel there was kind of like a few low shots put around I'm not sure who initiated it but just like the, the one thing that like kind of annoys me about it is like Joe has come back to talk to me about things especially for end of year show stuff as well for instance yesterday he mentioned like oh yeah so what are you planning on doing or anything like that? And I said, oh, we'll discuss it all tomorrow and everything like that. He said, yeah, yeah, I'll be in tomorrow. He hasn't turned up today. And it's just like, come on. I, I don't put, I, I, I've got no trust in him now because he said he will do one thing and then he's done the other. And essentially, I don't know what to do now for the uh, end of year show planning, but I know we need to plan it and I'm just we're just going to have to go on ahead without Joe. Um, so, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the uh, end of the uh, evaluation.